Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September the 5th, 2024. I'm Dave with Dave's Old Iron. And if you can't see me at 7 o'clock in the morning, it's not my fault. There are so many rangeland and forest fires burning in the western United States. The sun is up, but you can't see anything. Yeah, it is dark around here. In fact, the yard light that comes on at night is still on, and we'll go down here and see if we can't get a shot so you can see just how dark it is around here. Good morning, Lucky. Yeah, look at right there. The sun is up. It's coming up right there. In fact, 10 minutes ago, it cleared the horizon, but you can't see anything. And of course, the GoPro doesn't show it like we can see it here one-on-one -on -one in the valley. So yeah, folks, the sun is up. It's above the horizon. Can't see anything yet because there's just so much smoke in the valley. In fact, we have a extreme hazard warning out for anybody that has troubles breathing, elderly folks, little kids, that sort of thing, until sometimes Sunday, I think it is. The smoke is so thick you can cut it with a knife and serve it up on a plate. I mean, it is just awful this year. I, uh, in my 59 years of being on this planet, I don't recall the smoke ever being stuck in this valley this badly. Uh, in fact, they have multiple counties have issued no burning bans. So you can't burn your weeds, you can't burn ditch banks, you can't set fire to whatever. So, yeah, it's awful. But, Dave, what are you up to today? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story and show you what I have been up to the last couple of days. So, stay tuned for a recap. Yeah. Say, so here's a little known fact I bet y'all didn't know. Hard-boiled eggs are hard to beat with a whisk. <laughs> it is stinky, and I are going to go out with the five-foot mower and top of the weeds that are growing out here in the uh, grass hay. Yeah, I don't know you can see it, but some of that is hood high again. So we're going to go out and top that, and then when we're done with that, we're going to move out into the north field and the west field and mow those down flat. Once those have been mowed down flat, we'll use one of the tractors and that 10-foot international disc, go out there and tear that all up and hopefully bury some of those seeds and whatnot, and at least make that field, both of those fields, look a little more presentable. Yeah, I'm going back over some of the uh, windrows, if you'll call them that, that the uh, mower makes. Chopping up the stems a little bit finer. I should have really been out here mowing this stuff months ago, but I just didn't have the time to do it. That was just too dang stinking hot. Uh, yeah, temperatures in the hundreds. Tonight, uh, we're going to have lows down into the upper 30s. We've already had snow in the high country here in Idaho. So our growing season is all but done. I'm mowing this stuff kind of on the short side just because uh, I do have some grass coming up. We are going to have to probably reseed parts of this this fall uh, or again this spring. I don't know which. I may do both just for the heck of it. Just to get the uh, crop to come up that I want. I was thinking about putting some uh, clover in with this mix out here. But I've seen people asking just for uh, straight pasture grass, so I may leave this one as just uh, pasture grass in itself out here, because that's all that's coming up. Things were going great until... Forward slash 8 level.
this happened. Yeah, I found a big old wad of orange baling twine out there in the uh, field that I'd forgotten was there and got it all wrapped up around that blade. So I've got the uh, mower deck chained up to the bucket on the tractor uh, and it's blocked so if it, for heaven forbid, comes down it isn't going to squish me and kill me. So yeah, on we roll. We're going to have to cut that out of there. <clears throat> And of course, this happens to be that 5,000 pound tensile strength junk. Oh, what a mess. I'm going to be at this for a minute or two, I think. Fortunately, I don't think it was quite as wadded up as I had feared on this one end. I got most of it removed fairly easily. It pulled right off of this blade here. Let's see if we can just slide it off of this one. Then we'll be back in business. Hey, looky there. Yep, good as new. By the way, the radio did quit working again. Uh, it's the second one I had in there, and I found out why. I finally got enough nerve. I pulled that radio out of there. <laughs> There was a separate little glass fuse up in there and a holder behind the radio, uh, which is only that thick front to back. But So there's a lot of room in there. But there was another fuse up in there, plus I've got the one over here in that panel right there. So, yeah, I thought that was a little silly to be that redundant and have a second fuse. So I pulled the one out from behind the radio, and uh, yeah, it's working fine now. So, what's the number one difference between myself and Superman? Any ideas? <laughs> Superman has supervision. I require supervision. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you all about that story of the exploding stinky from 35 years ago. And it involves this international eight foot disc. Well, right after we got little stinky here, we found out it had problems. It had loose cylinder head bolts and it had oil in the radiator. Well, that's all from being loose head bolts. It oil pumps putting out more oil pressure than what builds up in the radiator so the oil seeps around the blown head gasket into the coolant lines and ends up in there. Now for those that are unaware, 8 Series Fords have this really cool little radiator cap with kind of a wing on the back of it. Yeah, see there? This one's a replacement and I'm going to tell you why it's on here. So after Stinky came to the farm, I hooked onto that desk, wanted to give it a try. But I also knew it had oil in the radiator of the little tractor. So I drained and flushed, drained and flushed, drained and flushed, and drained and flushed with more water. Filled it up with uh, water and uh, hooked onto that disc and started making around with it. Well, it got hot and whatnot, and I thought I'd check it. So I opened up the radiator cap full of water in the radiator still, but full of oil as well. So I thought about it for a minute and headed to town to go see the local Ford New Holland dealer and see what they had to say about it. So I went into town, got to the Ford New Holland dealer, wandered up to the counter there where they do service and parts, and there stood a fella, Enos. Yep. He and I have become longtime friends. In fact, I just ran into him down at the county fair last week. We could go today, as a matter of fact, and uh, had a nice chat with him. Good egg. And I asked him, I said, Enos, I just picked up this little 8 end Ford from your competitor down the road. They had a heck of a deal on it. Needs a little bit of help until I can put a new head gasket in it and do some other work to it. What do you recommend on getting oil out of the radiator? Well, Enos turned, looked over his shoulder, and pointed over to the wall. 
This is steel frame structure, mind you, so the steel shelf holding out the insulation and the uh, siding. And he says, see that bottle of Dawn dish soap sitting over there? And I said, yep. He said, get you one of those, dump about that much of it in there, run it, that'll clean it right out. Cool. At least that's what I thought at the time. Well, on my way home, I stopped by the local grocery store, thought I'd pick up, you know, a regular sized bottle of Dawn dish soap, kind of like what was sitting there on the wall in the shop. As I walk in, I see these little trial size bottles that are about that big. It's got like eight ounces of Dawn dish soap in it. They were for a dollar. And I'm thinking, cool, that's just the right size for what I need. I could get two or three of those if I need to to finish washing out the radiator. So I grabbed a couple of it. Brought them back out here to the farm. Dutifully unscrewed the radiator cap and dumped one of those into the radiator. Of course, I still hooked onto that big disc. I proceeded to pull it around the farm here a little bit. Now about that time, here come Nosy Kenny. Everybody in the area knows that he's super nosy. He drives by, craning his neck to see what you're doing, and if he don't like what you're doing, he turns you into the county commissioners or the highway department or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, he pulls up over here along the south fence line to watch and see what I was up to. Now being the nosy neighbor that Kenny is, from right here on this south fence line, he had a pretty good view of what was going on out there in the field. A short time later, Sam pulls up and joins Kenny watching me drag that big disc around with a little stinky. Well, now that I had an audience, I'm feeling pretty chuffed, you know? Here I am on this little Ford tractor. I'm pulling this big old eight foot disc. It's probably a little too big for stinky. And I'm working it good and hard. She's getting good and hot. I get down to the end of the field, the far end. And I'm looking back here and I can see Sammy and Kenny leaning on the fence. But right below them is this little puddle of white stuff. Didn't think much of it. So I beelined right back straight towards them because that was my line of sight to make sure I was going in a straight line. Well, by the time I got down here to the far end of the field, I realized what that little puddle or whatever that white blob was. It was some foam. Yeah, that had some oil mixed in with it. Yeah, it was coming out of the radiator overflow. And I'm thinking, cool, I'm getting rid of the oil out of the radiator. Yeah. So I waved at Kenny and Sam, turned around, went back to the other end of the field. Well, when I turned around and looked way down there at the far end, there was even a bigger puddle of white foam down at that far end. Well, as I got back down here to the top end of the field where Sam and Kenny were, I flipped the little tractor around and it started having convulsions. It was shaking and shivering and acting like it was going to barf. Yeah, didn't know what was going on. So I shut the tractor off, kind of looked around, and underneath there was this monstrous pile of white foam had come out of the overflow tube. And I'm thinking, and it still had some oil in it. I'm thinking, good, it's getting all cleaned out. So I get back on the tractor, get a little stinky going again. We're heading down to the far end of the field again. She starts having even worse convulsions and shaking and starts coughing and wheezing and backfiring and making all sorts of gosh awful noise. And then suddenly it happened. Kaboosh! Just like an old faithful geyser. Yeah radiator cap exploded off the top of the radiator shot straight up in the air and it was followed by this column of beautiful oily white hot or than heck foam come shooting straight up out of the radiator yeah and as I was moving forwards watching all of this stuff gurgitating up out of the radiator guess where it all landed right on top of yours truly well, Stinky here was having all sorts of convulsions. I shut it off. I'm scalded hot from hot foam with oil in it. And in amongst my cussing and being furious that I drove underneath that beautiful mucky mess, got covered in it burning, I can hear Sam and Kenny. 
<laughs> slapping their knees, slapping each other on the back, and just laughing like crazy. Yeah, that didn't help my attitude much. I was already steaming more than little Stinky was. Well, I was steaming hot by then. I mean, I was more furious and boiling over at that point in time than Stinky was. I was red-eyed, fire-breathing, smoke rolling out of my ears mad. And I was heading back to the New Holland Ford dealership in Twin Falls to go have a confrontation with Enos over his Dawn dish soap. So I jumped in the old Ford pickup truck, dropped that sucker into reverse, and I skidded rock and blew it out from underneath that truck every direction I could as I went screaming backwards out of the driveway, across the street, and down into the bar pit on the other side. I don't think the tires had finished spinning in reverse by the time I pulled that gear shift lever down into drive and mashed that pedal to the floor as hard as it'd go. I was burning rubber and even didn't stop at the stop sign. I was heading to Twin Falls because by golly, somebody was going to answer to pulling a joke on me. And as I'm doing this, there's Kenny and Sam laughing their butts off jumping in their trucks and going two different directions at the same time anywhere I wasn't. I'm pretty sure I set a speed record getting from the farm here into the city of Twin Falls to the Ford New Holland dealership. I went flying in there and there's got to be a good 150 feet between the entrance off the street to their front door. I was skidding brakes that entire way right up to the front door. I didn't even park in a parking spot. I slid in underneath the canopy where the front door is right up to the door. Bailed out of that old Ford pickup, slammed that dang door shut, went flying through the bifold opening glass doors in that dealership. And I hollered, eat us, as loud as I could. Well, I'll tell you what, the longer it took me to get into that dealership, the madder I got. I was so flipping furious, I think the devil was even hiding from me by then. I rolled up to that parts and service counter like a big old steamroller. There sits a bell on the counter. I start banging away on that bell. Then I can hear snickering coming from parts unknown in the building. I looked over to the left. The receptionist wasn't at her desk. I looked a little further to the left. Both salesmen's offices were empty. The manager's office was empty. And I didn't see anybody in the service bays or in the parts room. Nope, nobody was there. But I could hear snickering. And that was making me even more hot under the collar. And that's when I saw it, sitting there on the counter, was that brand new radiator cap that's sitting on this tractor today, with an invoice, a big old pink invoice, marked paid in full, with my name on that invoice. I don't know who it was, but I got a pretty good suspicion that it was Sam and Kenny called into Enos and said, hey Enos, you better fix him up with a new radiator cap. Now I never did find that old original radiator cap and I had a heck of a time trying to bend around that filler neck on the old radiator on this little tractor to get that new radiator cap to fit on there. But it's been on there ever since. And I still see Kenny and Sam every once in a while Kenny's still being nosy, and Sam's still being Sam, and, well, Enos is still giggling about the radiator cap. Now, by the time I returned back to the farm with the new cap, Stinky had cooled down enough for me to stick my fingers down in the radiator neck there and take an eyeball look and realize that what had happened was all that Dawn dish soap had turned all of the coolant in the engine and the radiator into foam, and when it built up enough pressure, it just blew the cap right clean off of it. And if you're thinking, yeah, right, Dave, that never happened. 
come on out if you have a metal detector. Wander around here in this end of the field. See if you can find that old radiator cap. That'll just prove the story's true. Now I found out that day just how many buckets of water it takes to fill up one of these radiators. Especially after you've opened all the drain cocks and everything, try to flush what was left of the foam out of the engine block, radiator hoses, and the radiator. Because there was no fluid left in it, it was all foam. Took me three months to finally work all of that Dawn dish soap out of that radiator. Well, I got to thinking about that Dawn dish soap. Walked by the trash can, grabbed that little bitty eight ounce bugger out of that damn can, picked it up in my hand, I started reading the label on it. Right there in plain lettering. Eight times concentrate. Two drops will do ya. It's no wonder I blew up the radiator. When you're talking a 32 ounce bottle and you use that much of a 32 ounce bottle of regular Dawn dish soap to clean the oil out of a radiator and then you grab an eight ouncer that's eight times concentrate, I might as well dump that whole big bottle into this thing. Yeah, so not only did I have muck all over me, in my hair, down my collar, in my underwear, I had egg on my face too because I was in such a giddy mood and so happy to found a little bitty bottle for a dollar, I didn't read the damn label. So, moral of the story is, slow down, smell the roses, and read the dang gum labels. Yeah. Yep, never did find out who bought that new radiator cap that's on here, never did. And uh, quite honestly, I'm sure Sam and Kenny are still giggling about it from occasion to occasion. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story. It is a true one. There is a radiator cap out here somewhere. I just haven't plowed it up and found it yet. Anyway, I'm Dave with Dave's Old Iron. Wishing you well until we see you next time. For now, I'm going to get out of the last of this 90 degree heat that we're having. And uh, probably in the next video or two that you see, we'll be doing something else like prepping for winter. So y'all be careful out there and have a good one. I'll catch up with you later. Bye-bye for now.